So last week in chapter 15, we learned that uh, consumption and investment effectively depends on expectation about future income and interest rate. Uh, what we had learned in equal to a seven is consumption and, uh, and investment depends on say our current income and interest rate. Last week we learned that not only the current levels, but also the expectations about future levels affect our consumption and investment. What we are going to learn this week in chapter 16 is the channels through which expectation affects consumption and investment. Okay. And also keep in mind that this is the last chapter uh, before we have our first quiz. So at the end of this week on Saturday, we are going to be having our first quiz, but we will talk about that later. So let's get down to it in chapter 16. And this diagram that I have right here is taken directly from the book and it shows various relationships. Okay, so for example, let's take the first one. Uh, we have future after tax labor income. If it goes up, if our future income goes up, what will happen? Our human wealth will go up. As a result, since our human wealth is going up, our consumption will go up. That makes sense. Uh, what about the future real interest rate? If real interest rate goes up, we have a red arrow here. See, that means that if real interest rate is going up, human wealth will go down. And as a result, consumption will go down. So similarly, just look at all these relationships. We've talked about all of them in the previous chapter. The diagrams given in chapter six, 16, but talked about all of this in chapter 15. So make sure that you understand the transmission mechanism about how different changes affect our consumption and investment. And of course, keep in mind from this diagram is that we are only talking about the futures in this diagram. So future, 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 future. But it uh, applies for current level as well. So if future after tax labor income is going up, consumption is going up. But also if our current after tax labor income is going up, consumption will be going up. If we come down here, if future real interest rate is going up, then present value will be going down and investment will be going down. But it's also applicable for the current real interest rate if that goes up the red arrow so pv will go down and investment will go down okay uh, so make sure you guys understand this diagram from chapter uh, 15 and for this chapter let us jump straight into it and let me write down the ice curve So in chapter five, which you would have done in equal to a seven, we introduced the ice curve and it was written like this. Output depends on consumption, which is effectively a function of Y minus T, plus investment, which is a function of output and interest rate, plus government expenditure. This was the ice curve. Of course, in chapter six, we had also introduced an X here, R plus X, where X was the risk premium. Uh, but for now, uh, we can ignore the risk premium. We will come back to it later on. So for now, we don't need to focus on risk premium. But let me just erase this entire thing. We're not focusing on that. So this is what we have. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to simplify this ice curve a little bit. I'm going to simplify it in two steps. So in step one, I'm going to take this entire thing and I'm going to write it as A. So suppose I write A is equal to C y minus t plus i y plus i effectively what i'm saying is that a is consumption plus investment therefore we can call this uh, private spending so 
So remember, like from your income, what do you do? You save, you consume, or you invest. So saving is saving, and consumption plus investment, that's private spending. So uh, the way of writing this in a more formal way is that A is a function of Y, T, and R, which is equal to, of course, what we know as I, Y plus, not plus, sorry, this is not a plus, Y comma R, Y comma R. This is what we have and of course if you guys remember 207 this is a positive relationship if y goes up if income goes up spending will go up this is a negative relationship if tax goes up spending will go down and this is also a negative relationship if real interest rate goes up spending will go down so then i can write the ice curve in this form y is equal to a which is a function of y t r plus g right so that's the first step of simplification and in the second step what i am going to do is i'm going to add expectation so that should have been obvious right we are in the expectation chapter so everything ultimately boils down to adding expectation. So now I'm going to write the IS curve in this form. Y is equal to A. However, instead of A just being a function of output tax and interest rate, it is also going to be a function of a future income, which is an expectation, future tax, which is also an expectation, and future real interest rate, which is also an expectation, plus G. This is what we have. I mean, this might look a little. I mean, there's a this is notation heavy, so you can just simplify and write y equals to a plus G, okay? where G is government spending and A is private spending. Okay, so. This is our ice curve. Let's highlight this. Now, what are the implications of this? This is so. I mean, effectively, the only thing that we have done in the first level of simplification we just wrote the equation in a different way we didn't really change anything but in the second step what we have done is we have introduced expectation right this three things so what are the implications of uh, adding this expectation here so first thing is that ice curve is still downward sloping so the slope has not changed okay why is that because even after adding expectation the relationship that uh, let me write this down here this is why i curve is downward sloping uh, let's say a decrease in r which is the policy rate leads to and increase in private spending. And when private spending goes up, uh, this rise in private spending, remember what you had learned in equal to a seven, this through a multiplier leads to arise in y okay and that is why 
we had learned in equal to rho seven in chapter five that the ice curve is downward sloping, effectively meaning that if uh, if r the real interest rate were to go down, uh, y output will go up, and even after adding expectation to the mix, that will not change. Ice curve continues to be uh, uh, a downward sloping. But the second implication is more interesting, which tells us that the slope of the ice curve is steeper, which effectively means a lot of you should be able to figure out even before I write this down, ice curve being steeper means that uh, relatively large change in R will cause a small change in Y. Or another way of saying this would be that Y is inelastic to changes in R. And why that is, I'm going to, we're going to discuss in the next video. Before you go over to the next video, uh, it might be interesting to spend a few minutes trying to figure it out. Uh, so suppose in chapter five, we had Y here, R here, this was our eyes. But now what I'm saying is after adding expectation to the mix, our eyes is going to be like this, okay? It's going to be much steeper. So the question is why? You'll get the answer in the next video. But try to figure it out on your own if you can.